Now I would like to invite next moderator, Ms. Vesna Damjanić, TV presenter from Radio Television Serbia, to join us. Vesna, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us here at the panel where we will discuss about 20 years of building cashless economy in Serbia. You know, uh, you as I, we cannot imagine our life without uh, pay card payment uh, today and how it is important to have a visa in our pocket. And uh, what uh, really has changed during these uh, 20 years in uh, Serbia and what is ahead, I will talk about with my and your guest. It is Mr. Andrei Aleikin, Senior Director for Digital Solutions at Visa. Mr. Aleikin, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us here. Good morning and pozdrav Vesna and all the participants and guests of the summit. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to speak to you today. Thank you. Yes, it is. We had a great discussion uh, before us uh, about what is new in banking sector. But first of all, can you tell us where what Visa does now and what is uh, your place in this ecosystem? Uh, thank you for this question, Vesna. I really think we need a small introduction, right? And uh, Visa, as a company and as a global service, uh, has emerged uh, from a very simple idea to give a person access to the money at uh, his or her bank account using a very simple instrument, a key to account, which is a card. And uh, this idea has been proposed 60 years ago by the founder of Visa, D. Hawk, together with a network which connected several banks together to enable payments using cards. And uh, since then, uh, this uh, uh, model, which we call four-party model, is still actually the same, although it now um, sees, is seeing some uh, changes, some extensions, uh, like introduction of mobile operators, for example, to the gameplay. Uh, but still, there are four main participants. The issuing bank, which issues a card to the customer, the customer who goes to the merchant to pay with this card, the merchant who accepts the card and reads the, reads the credentials, uh, which means that card number, some additional information, which points to the account of the customer in the bank. And uh, the bank which is servicing the merchant, which is acquiring bank. This bank receives the request to get money for merchant, sends it to Visa, Visa sends uh, to the bank that, uh, who issued the card and blocks the amount on the account. So this is how it works. It's quite simple, uh, but this is a very powerful ecosystem where Visa stands in the center. Visa enables the communication between all the, these participants, enables the possibility for the customer to pay with his Visa card and use money from the Visa account in any point in the world where Visa is providing the acceptance. And um, it also provides the function of clearing and settlement, of actual moving money between accounts at the end of the day. Uh, besides that, Visa provides a set of rules, which are the accumulated experience of the company during 60 years, uh, provides the measures uh, for security of payments, uh, provides the brand, which is one of the most trusted in the world. It's like number five uh, on the list of most trusted brands in the world. And all this uh, creates a very important uh, ecosystem for the economy, which enables fast and secure movement of money. Yeah? And there are different ways how this money can be moved. The very simple thing from which Visa started is the payment transaction, which now in a fashionable way we call C2B, customer to business, when the customer pays to business. There is also a possibility to move money in reverse direction from business to customer using disbursement transactions. For example, disburse salaries to customers' cards. There is a possibility to pay from the customer to government, C2G, for example, to pay for registrations or taxes. Or the uh, government can send money to the customer, for example, social benefits for people who uh, are entitled for them. This is G2C. We also, of course, have the fast-growing type of payments, which are person-to-person -person transfers or card-to-card -card transfers. And this is C2C type of payment. And Visa has recently introduced a new interesting technology to support that, which is transfer from card to mobile number. You do not uh, need to know the card number of uh, your payment re recipient or your colleague. You can transfer uh, the money to the mobile number, and Visa will sub substitute the mobile number with the card number. This is called alias. 
And of course, there is a very big sector of B2B payments between businesses, from business to business. And uh, this is not limited to domestic payments. Visa has recently introduced a very interesting revolutionary cross-border instant movement of money between businesses, which is called B2B Connect, um, based on very modern ledger technology, blockchain ledger technology. So uh, these are all types of movement of money in the economy, which are really important, and Visa is the key player in that. But, uh, you know, Visa is no longer just a credit card company. It's a big technological company, technology provider. Visa, uh, in the last year, for example, in the last five years, has invested $9 million in development of new payment technologies and security features. And uh, during the last year, we have um, prevented the fraud for the total of 25 billion of US dollars due to these technologies and solutions. And Visa is also providing the possibility for the new technologies to emerge not only within Visa, but from fintech companies and other players. Uh, we have opened the access to Visa network through so-called APIs, application programming interfaces, and all these external partners can now use Visa services through these APIs. And I would like to mention, actually, that Visa itself is actually the first fintech company, if we look at it properly, because it started with a company which is, was not a bank, but which helped the banks to service their customers and to organize payments between their customers. So it was a first fintech in the world, probably 60 years ago. Okay, so um, this is uh, uh, what we are doing and how we see it now. And our new approach is to become so-called a network of networks, not just to move money between card accounts, but also to provide services to other payment facilities, to other networks, and to unite them together, to connect them together, being the network of networks. We are looking into new value-added services for our banks and customers, new revenue streams, and uh, uh, this is not only cards anymore. Yeah. So that's it in brief, yes, now. Sorry if it, it was a bit long. No, definitely it's not a card company anymore, a credit card company. We see how much you really invest in, um, in innovations, but uh, during this pandemic times, uh, our life has changed. Uh, did your um, uh, business focus has changed in this pandemic times, and how uh, time and how 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 does this uh, this pandemic really affect on your plan and on your work and on your investment? Uh, this is really a very important and hot uh, topic, which is high on our agenda now, and uh, we see significant impact actually. Of course, people are now trying to spend as little time as possible for doing things like payments. They try to avoid physical contact, even when they're trying to do physical payment at the merchant. They are trying to avoid going to the shop and they use e-commerce more and more. And uh, we rarely see this impact on the numbers on our business. We see that uh, contactless transactions are growing very fast. And this is very positive, actually. We see that e-commerce transactions uh, are growing very fast. We see significant growth uh, since last year during the COVID period. It's very natural. But we understand that we need to uh, help the businesses in this uh, difficult time with their transition to digital. And uh, we are doing a lot of um, efforts, a lot of programs to support small businesses in their digitalization and their movement to e-commerce in particular. You probably heard about our campaign uh, to support small businesses, which is called Where You Shop Matters. Uh, it's about um, incentivizing customers to use local businesses, to use contactless payments, to use e-commerce uh, with local businesses. And uh, the sh short video a bit before our um, discussion was about that particular initiative. Uh, Visa has a global fund which has invested $210 million in support of small businesses during COVID period. We also are doing more technical things. For example, we have increased contactless limits to 5,000 dinars, which allows to make contactless transactions without entering PIN or authenticating yourself on the smartphone uh, until this limit. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, creating new use cases for P2P transfers like Helios. We are introducing new inexpensive technologies to accept contactless payments for small businesses like tap to phone and I will speak about it later. 
And we're also proposing new technology for public transport, and that was payments there, and also we'll discuss it when we speak about innovations. Yes, you have already mentioned uh, some uh, uh, new uh, new possibilities. So what uh, really, uh, during these uh, pandemic times, what uh, new possibility, uh, have, uh, possibilities have emerged, uh, especially be because of uh, this uh, contactless payment and uh, what, what is new has uh, uh, Visa? Uh, the tap to phone is a very good example of what new we can offer. Uh, if a small business uh, previously uh, had to either accept cash or uh, take uh, an expensive terminal from the bank to accept card payments, now uh, a small business can use the smartphone with NFC function, which uh, currently can be bought at $50, and uh, start accepting payments using special application on this phone which is, of course, provided by the bank. It's secure, it's uh, certified, uh, but it's very easy to install and uh, very inexpensive to do, right? So this is an example of what we are doing for, um, to help uh, during this period uh, to really uh, simplify payments for people in COVID-19. I'm sure there are more benefits for the for the people to use this uh, this new way of payment, and not only for the ordinary people, for us as citizens, but also for the company, for the government. Absolutely. If you speak about contactless uh, uh, as part of cashless payments, yeah, cashless payments in general, um, there are significant benefits for all participants of the ecosystem. Uh, for people, uh, it's, uh, first of all, the health security, because they don't have to deal with cash. And we understand that cash could be a bit dangerous in COVID times. Yeah? Uh, then it's much faster and more convenient to pay with your phone, with your watch, uh, with your wristband, whatever, and uh, to do it in a distance without even touching the terminal. Uh, you do not have to carry cash with you. You do not have to bother with change, whatever. For economy in general, uh, the impact is much more significant. Here we are speaking about reduction of informal economy and shadow economy, uh, about transparency, because every uh, cashless payment is recorded, it brings transparency. Even if there is no printed check, there is an electronic receipt involved, and these uh, uh, transfers are taxable. So this brings a lot of new uh, flows to uh, white economy, to official economy, which is very positive to a lot of markets, including including markets in our subdivision, including certain market. It also reduces the cost of processing cash, because the cash has to be printed, distributed, collected, counted, and so on and so forth. Um, and this uh, takes quite a lot of effort and money, and we are saving on that. Uh, when we move to uh, the merchant, uh, the benefits for merchants are also pretty obvious. Uh, they do not have to spend uh, time and effort uh, of their employees to collect and count and deposit cash to the account. They do not have to pay the bank uh, for cash collection and incassation, as we call it. They uh, have a convenience of instant availability of funds in the account, which they can immediately use for next purchases uh, of goods and supplies for the company, for example. So all these are really beneficial for small merchants, and they are now actively moving from cash to cashless, especially in COVID times. Yeah, really, we can we can be assured everyday life how much benefit we as a citizens have from a cashless payment, and especially during these pandemic times. But also, it is very important that you have mentioned the impact for um, grey economy. And you know, we in Serbia have a, have a problem with the grey economy, but I think it's going going better with this cashless payment. But also, you have mentioned new services and uh, that you have provide and and new in innovation and innovations in those services. Can you tell us more about it? You have mentioned public transport. Yeah, uh, listen. Let me start with a little bit broader picture, okay? And we will come to public transport uh, as well. And the broader picture would be this. Uh, we are doing innovations on both sides of the payment ecosystem, on paying side and accepting side. Yeah? The paying side is about the customer and the way he can use money on his account to pay. And uh, here the two big areas are uh, physical payments, which we call face-to-face -face or card present, where the customer stays in front of the merchant, in front of the POS terminal and tries to pay. Right? And another big area is remote payments or electronic commerce, e-commerce, uh, remote payments uh, uh, 
in a form of famous from mobile application and so on, where you are not in front of the terminal. So these are two big areas, and we are providing new solutions for both of them. And also we are working on solutions for acceptance side, how to accept these payments in the most easy, convenient and uh, simple way. So let's start with um, the payer side. And uh, if you don't mind, I will uh, show a slide which will help us to understand what are the new things uh, which we are doing in this area. Okay. Just one second. Please confirm when you can see it. Yes, we can see. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I will speak about tokenization just now. So, what we want to do, we want to enable uh, our customers to make payments with as many different devices they, they want. Yeah? We want uh, to grow the share of mobile uh, contactless payments, uh, which are done with smartphones, with watch, uh, NFC watch, uh, wristband, whatever, different form factors. And um, all this creates a, uh, a need to load payment credentials, card data, to millions of devices. Yeah? Um, where this trend started, uh, there was a very important task in front of all payment systems, how to do it in secure way. And what different solutions uh, tested and tried, uh, like a secure element, a special chip in smartphones, host card emulation, and an attempt to emulate uh, credentials in the cloud and load for every transaction and then delete it from the phone. Uh, different technologies, but the most efficient as of today is so-called tokenization. Uh, the idea of this technology is that um, we do not load the real card data to our smartphones, our devices. Uh, we uh, load a special token, which is uh, emulator of a card data. It's a pointer. It's the digital credential record, which looks like card data, but in reality, it's not. When the fraudster uh, gets, use, uh, gets, gets this uh, information, uh, the poster will not be able to do anything with it, will not be able to do a payment transaction. Because uh, a token as card credential is limited to a certain device, certain area of use, and uh, it protects the real card data much more efficiently than previous solutions. So what we are working on, uh, for the past couple of years, we worked hard to replace card data with tokens in physical world, in uh, wallets, in uh, mobile payments, and uh, we have launched uh, a number of solutions with Apple Pay, Google Pay, a number of markets, including the launch of Apple Pay in Serbia uh, with Raiffeisen Bank. And uh, we also uh, loaded tokens to issuer wallets, the mobile applications of banks, uh, where now people can pay using these applications at uh, contactless terminals, right? This is due uh, to tokens, which replaced cards in all those solutions. Uh, but uh, we are now moving this idea and this technology to another big area, to electronic commerce. And this is very important innovation which are, we are working on now. Um, when the real card data will be replaced with tokens in e-commerce, it will provide a lot of benefits. And uh, first of all, it's security, because uh, the same uh, idea, token protects real card data very well, and the processors will not be able to use it. Uh, secondly, uh, automated uh, life cycle management, as we call it, which means replacement of card details when your card has expired or has been uh, blocked or lost, whatever. If you have registered your card at multiple websites, and if the card got expired, now you need to do manual re-registration. Re at every website, right? With tokens, all of this will be done automatically for you. You will not have to take care of that. Uh, then we, you will be able to see the real design of the card, the picture of your real card when you're making payments in e-commerce every time uh, due to tokens and the whole infrastructure. And uh, moreover, there is an interesting service which we call uh, Digital Skins where banks can use, can offer the customers to choose their own design or to replace it every day or as frequently as they want. Uh, very interesting new possibilities. 
And there are uh, some other benefits. I will not uh, spend too, too much time on that. So this is a very big and important uh, innovation which we are working on now. Uh, this innovation will be uh, performed in two big areas of e-commerce. And let me switch to another slide in a second. You can see it. Um, you can see another slide, right? Yeah. So uh, in e-commerce, there are some cards which are stored on file, where you register your card with the merchant, or there are merchants where you enter your cards menu every time. Yeah? The customers who prefer to do that. So uh, we are now offering tokenized solutions for both of these situations. We are replacing cards which are stored on file with tokens and making it more secure and reliable. And we are also offering a very interesting new technology, which is called Secure Remote Commerce. Uh, for those who want to enter manually, we are uh, offering the new service called Click to Pay. Uh, let me... right. So the idea is uh, to avoid the situation which we have now in the commerce, where on some websites you have multiple ways to, to make the payment for the goods, right? You have to choose among multiple payment solutions. And when each payment system was offering its own way to pay, the customer were getting confused. So um, multiple payment systems, and you see the logos uh, on the bottom of the slide, got together and developed a new standard, which is called Secure Remote Commerce, or SRC, and which allows to apply the same approach as we use in the physical world, where you, can, where you can use any card of any payment system at a POS terminal in a standard way. And you do not bother uh, about the differences of custom experiences. It's always the same, yeah? So we want to do the same in e-commerce, and SRC standard is about that. It was registered with International EMV Committee. Now it's an international standard, and Visa is implemented, implementing it already. We have launched it in Ukraine, and we are rolling it out to other markets. So this is uh, one more big innovation uh, which we are doing in e-commerce world. And uh, it will help the customers to pay uh, very easily in a very seamless way, in a very standard way with whatever card they want to use uh, at websites which support this technology. Uh, very close to one click payment, very smooth customer experience and tokenized security. So this is, uh, these are two big things in e-commerce. And now uh, let me switch uh, to the area of acceptance of payments. I've already mentioned to you that we have uh, the new technology for accepting contactless payments, which we call uh, tap to phone There is another popular name, soft post, software POS, software POS terminal, right? And uh, this is a, a technology which allows to convert any NFC smartphone into a terminal accepting contactless cards and smartphones. Uh, for any small merchant or large merchant, we uh, have also tried this solution for public transport already in a small city of Borisov in Belarus, and that works okay. So uh, in the last year, we have completed the certification and launched uh, seven uh, different programs of, of that to phone. And we see that this is really popular with small businesses, this uh, solution which is really convenient and expensive and easy to roll and make massive. So uh, we have strong hopes that this will be a very popular solution in the nearest future especially for small businesses. And also, and now I'm coming to the question you have asked. Apologies for such a long introduction. Uh, this is about public transport. Uh, just one second, yes. Um, this slide demonstrates that Visa has a range of solutions uh, with different level of complexity for public transport, starting from very simple solutions, which are close to what post terminals uh, do in retail, and uh, to fixed fare solutions, which we are um, using currently in most of cities, and the most advanced so-called mobility and uh, transit transactions model, which supports multimodal transportation. Uh, for example, when you do your daily trip on different ways of transportation, you start, for example, with your car and the parking, then metro, then bus, a trolley bus. Uh, so this model supports all this journey and uh, allows you to apply discounts and caps 
to parts of all this journey and will charge you with just one transaction at the end of the day from your card. So very flexible, very convenient for the customer and allows to get discounts similar to discounts of people who, who, who buy period pass. Yeah? So your economics will be the same uh, as if you buy a period pass for the month, for example. So the, this is one uh, of the examples of what can be done to support contactless payments in everyday life. Uh, public transport, everyday spend, everyday transaction uh, for people, which really forms the habit of paying uh, with card every day, uh, of uh, doing cashless payments. Right? So this is uh, very important on our agenda. So uh, in brief, uh, these are some examples of innovations which we are doing now in different areas. Uh, and uh, of course, there are many more, but let me just limit myself to these examples and maybe you have questions about that. Yes, yes definitely. Uh, when I'm watching this, I see that this really could easy our life, get easier to, uh, to our lives. So did you estimate uh, how much um, benefit uh, in everyday life would have uh, using this all your new solutions uh, for contactless payment, for every day, for business to business, also for the public transport, I found that very interesting. And even even that you have on your mind with this discount for for passenger. Uh, yeah, so I think this creates the holistic customer experience uh, because every physical payment which the customer uh, is doing can be done in contactless mode, and. Uh, more and more payments will be done uh, in remote e-commerce-like way, yeah? using applications, using websites. For example, the next step which we are doing now for transit is so-called uh, mobility as a service concept, mass concept, uh, which is uh, a convenient service for the customer where I can choose my route for the day. For example, my route from the home to my office. And... Uh, provide some preferences. For example, I prefer to rent a scooter instead of walking, or I prefer to take a taxi instead of bus, or vice versa. And then the uh, application, the system, will build the route for me with a number of options which I can choose from. And I will pay with just one transaction without doing any effort. This uh, amount will be charged, charged automatically to my card. Uh, this is a holistic view of the transit solution, right? This can include parking, for example, this can include renting uh, of the car or scooter or whatever, uh, other components of the urban mobility journey. If you speak about my everyday experience, I will pay for coffee with contactless. I will pay, pay uh, for lunch uh, with contactless. And uh, this will be a habit uh, where I do not need cash at all. You know? I do not need cash through all, throughout all my day. And actually, I'm already very rarely using cash for myself. Probably you do the same. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I never have cash with myself. <laughs> that that is sometimes problem in Serbia. And speaking about Serbia, uh, what about this contact? What is your experience uh, when it comes to digital solution here in Serbia from our company? Uh, yeah, we, we value very much uh, the help of our partners when we implement digital solutions in Serbia. Uh, I think the specifics of Serbian uh, markets and Serbian banks is that many of them belong to large international groups. And mm -hmm. sometimes the decision to roll out new technology is made not on the level of a Serbian bank, but on the level of the group headquarters, uh, which sometimes takes a bit more time and adds bureaucracy, to be honest. Uh, but still, uh, we are launching new and new technologies in Serbian market and the latest examples are the launches of Apple Pay in Serbia and Montenegro, uh, Rapaiz in Serbia, for example. Um, this trend will continue definitely with other banks. Uh, we are waiting for Google Pay to come to Serbia and for other wallets. Uh, we uh, really count on tap to phone technology. We believe that it may help the Serbian market, help uh, small and medium enterprises to start accepting. Uh, cashless payments and to switch from traditional terminals sometimes to save costs. Uh, so uh, it's really a market hungry for innovations mm -hmm. and uh, we see our task in bringing them to certain market. And we are doing that. I think people now, because of this pandemic time, 
uh, we are quite ready for new solution and we are more digitally aware of all these benefits that we really have with uh, good digital solutions. And where do you see biggest uh, challenge uh, for, for this time period, not only for your company, but uh, and not only for Serbia, but globally, if we are talking about for contactless payment and all this digital solution for payment? Um, yeah, let me first of all uh, illustrate what you have just said with example that um, Serbian customers are really uh, very eager to use new technologies. Uh, the number of contactless payment transactions in Serbia uh, increased by 40% in the last year, in one year. And the penetration of contactless payments in face-to-face -face payments, in payments in terminals, uh, is about 80%, which is probably uh, one of the highest in our sub-region. Uh, the higher uh, number is only in Georgia, which has a unique situation with 96% penetration of contactless payments. But this is uh, a special case, I would say. So uh, it's really good progress and uh, really a confirmation of the uh, readiness of people to use new technologies and contactless in particular. Uh, the challenges uh, related to COVID and the current situation, I think, are in our reaction to them, in our quick understanding of the changes are needed, that uh, this new reality um, may be for long. The digital commerce is here and we have to switch to it. Yeah? And small businesses and medium businesses are doing it already. They're seeing the need to switch to digital commerce. And uh, the sooner we do it, the more efficient way we do it, the better for all, us, for all of us. So this is a challenge, a challenge to do it quickly and smoothly. And uh, we're ready to help with that, including public transport, by the way. Especially. And uh, at the end, I like to ask all people that I'm talking about, uh, about digital solutions, but generally during this pandemic time, where do you see your company, your business in five uh, five years period. But I think it's too long. Maybe we can see, where do you see it in one year period here in Serbia and globally, and what will what we will have new? Yes, you are right. Yes. It's very difficult to predict anything for five year period, really. You see the situation is changing so rapidly. And in payment, uh, payments area especially, it's a very fast changing industry. But what I believe is uh, very easy to predict is that the move from cash to cashless will continue and will enhance uh, every year and every month, actually. I really believe in that, it's obvious. Then the move to digital, digital credentials, to card, uh, cardless credentials, I mean digital uh, in form of tokens, for example, this is the way which will dominate in the very nearest future. Uh, so we will have all these credentials loaded to our devices, we will be using them easily, and there will be no need to go to the bank to get your card anymore. There will be uh, remote uh, ways to authenticate yourself and open an account and issue a card in minutes or possibly even seconds. In one of the previous presentations today, uh, one of the colleagues mentioned uh, about remote authentication, which will be possible in Serbia, so this is a very important supportive uh, news and supportive technology to enable this digital uh, uh, digital way of living. A digital issuance of cards, of course, is already existing. It will proliferate no plastic issue. Yeah, plastic is probably going away gradually. Um, contactless dominating in face-to-face um, -face payments and physical payments and uh, tokens dominating in e-commerce. So that's, uh, I think, uh, the nearest future we should all see. Near, nearest future. And there is always a matter of security. How secure is used this new digital solution for payments? Uh, you know, uh, tokens, which I've mentioned today several times, provide really a new level of security combined with convenience, with smooth customer experience. And this is not only because token replaces the sensitive card data with something different, with a token credentials, which are better protected, but also it's because there is a lot of additional information which can be passed in a token transaction to the bank, for example. And when bank makes a decision, is it a real customer or a fraudster? Is it a real transaction which I should approve or a fraud transaction which I should decline? Now the bank will have much, much more information to make this decision. The bank will know 
what is the device which is used in this transaction? Is it the same device which was used to get this token or different? Was this device used for previous transactions like that or not? What is the history of transactions of this customer, of this merchant, of this device? What is the risk score for all of them, which is provided by Visa? Visa calculates it in real time. With this all information, it would be much easier to protect the customer and separate the customer from a fraudster. You see? So I really believe that uh, we are coming to the era of much higher security with much more uh, smooth and flawless customer experience. I will not have to enter uh, OTP one-time password every time for a commerce transaction because my device, my token, my previous behavior and uh, biometric parameters will, will all be used to recognize me without ans asking me to enter a password. You know? This is what we are coming to. Great, very easy, very efficient. And yeah. at this very end, uh, what is your key message for all of us who use this contactless payment and uh, not only for citizens, for your client also, for for small and medium business, uh, what they are, should be aware of? Um, use cashless payments. Do not use cash. <laughs> this would be my key message. And there are a lot of ways to do that. And we are offering new ways. Please be open to these new ways to pay and to accept payments. Use your smartphones to pay and to accept payments. Use this proliferating new solutions, which are much easier, better protected, and provide smooth customer experience and use Visa, Visa cards and Visa solutions. Visa is the best way to pay and be paid. This is our motto, and I believe it reflects the reality. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lakin, really, for this great conversation. I'm really, we heard so much new information for very useful for everyday life. I hope our uh, listeners also and viewers also had enjoyed. I really thank you once again for joining us here at this panel. And now I give floor to a new panelist and new moderator. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this discussion and for this opportunity. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.